did you fall in love with Spain on that last trip and have just been daydreaming about how you can move over there, but haven't been able to find a visa that would allow you to work and live in the country? Now with the new Spanish Nomad Visa, that's possible. But instead of me trying to figure out all of the ins and outs, what it is and what requirements you need, I'm gonna meet with the expert, Christian Balsales of the Balsales Group, and he's gonna tell you all about the new Spain Nomad Visa and how you can get it. Hey, hey Christian, how are you? Nice to see you. Same here, thanks for making the time. It's a pleasure. All right, so Christian, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, what is the Nomad Visa? Yeah, the Digital Nomad Visa is a new residency permit that it was approved in December of last year in Spain, and it came into effect from 1st of January, and it's a permit that will allow those non-European citizens who work remotely either as a freelancer or as an employee for their companies or for their clients to do it from Spain with a residence permit. Okay, so this is primarily for non-European citizens. So somebody, for example, from Italy, this isn't worth applying for. Exactly, because they have other permits, more advantages than this one. But for the non-European citizens, they would be able to apply for this permit. Okay, and what kind of requirements do they have if you want to apply? Is it different for someone that's a freelancer and someone that's an employee? Yes, well, the base is the same for both permits. But if you want, I'll go ahead with the requirement in each situation to make it understandable. So for the freelancers, they need to prove that they were freelancers for the last three months. They need to prove that they have clients uh, that their companies are existing for over 12 months. They need as well a letter from these clients where they authorize this freelancer to do this work remotely from Spain. In this letter, they need to indicate also the amount of money that they will pay for this service and any special conditions. This would be for the freelancers. For the employees, they need to prove that during the last three months they were working for a, for a company. Uh, they need to prove as well uh, through a letter from the company that they are authorized to do this work remotely from Spain. In this letter, it needs to indicate the salary, the terms and conditions of the relation. This would be the two general uh, requirements. If you want, I go into the details on each uh, type of permit. Yeah, that'd be great because I think from what I understand and some questions that I've received is there's different requirements and kind of different minimums that they're going to need for each in terms of income and exactly. things like that. For the freelancers, additionally to this, they need to provide uh, their curriculum vitae, their uh, university degrees if they have, and their experience in the sector. Also, they need to sign a letter where they compromise to pay the social security in Spain when they get the approval. As well, they need to have a private health insurance in Spain until they start paying the social security. And about the financial funds, they need to prove that they have savings above 28,800 for the principal, if they bring family, it would be 7,200 per each additional family member. This would be the base of the freelance. Additionally to this, they need to provide the criminal background check, they need to fill a form, and uh, if you want a lawyer to represent them, they need to sign an authorization. This would be about the freelance. So with the freelance, just a couple things yeah. within that, because there's always some extra questions and yeah, yeah, about no. the paperwork and everything. Um, in terms of, you said you needed a university degree, kind of higher degree of education? You need either a university degree or a experience of three years in the sector. Through the, you need to prove the experience with recommendation letters, contracts, this is an open uh, way to prove it. Okay, and in, in terms of providing not only that paperwork, but also the background check, how does someone go about that? Well, the, the criminal records, they need to, to do it. Uh, if they are from the United States, pues they need to request it at the FBI. Once they have it, they need to apostille and translate it into Spanish. Can that be done here, or does that have to be done back in the States, for example? Yeah, on regards to the FBI, uh, it can be done from Spain. The only thing that it could take longer than if you do it in the U.S. We are talking, if we do it from Spain, about around 10 to 12 weeks. If you do it in the U.S., it would be 7, 8 weeks. Oh, so it's a little bit shorter, obviously, back at home than, than over here. Exactly. But it can, it can be done in over Spain. in Spain yeah. as well. Okay. And what about the health insurance? I think that's a big topic that a lot of people always are asking about. You said you needed Spanish health insurance. Yes, uh, you need to have a Spanish health insurance. Normally, the prices in Spain for a health insurance would be between 50 to 80 euros per month per person with full coverage. 
it's a lot cheaper over here than getting it back back in the states. Yeah. People will be happy to hear that a little <laughs> bit, right? But they can do all of that process from home, from back in the states, or from outside of Spain. Or does that have to be done in Spain to get the health insurance as well? No, the the health insurance. Uh, basically, when you want to get a health insurance in Spain, you need to fill a form explaining your preconditions and your health situation. And, uh, and then the insurance in a couple of days, they approve or not the, the request. And, and then if they approve it, you need to pay to them uh, normally six months in advance and they give you the, the, the insurance that will be used for the immigration procedure later on. And that was in terms of just freelancers. Exactly. Right? So what happens if I am working for a company and I want to, and they allow me to work remotely and I want to move over to Barcelona, to Spain in general? Yes, uh, additionally to the documents that we mentioned, the work contract for at least three months that the company for whom they work, it existed during the past 12 months and the letter of authorization to do this work remotely from Spain, they will need to provide the curriculum vitae, university degrees if they have, if they don't have university degrees, experience on the sector for the last uh, three years, additionally the, the criminal records as well from the FBI, that they have a private health insurance in Spain, so they will need to have an insurance as well until they become active in the social security. And here with the workers, the key is the social security because Spain requests a certificate from the tax authorities of uh, the country where he is working, for example, from the US. They request a certificate from the social security of the United States that says that they will cover his social rights uh, in Spain uh, during all this period. Spain has an agreement with the U.S. on regards to Social Security, so there is a form that they need to fill to request this document to the Social Security of the United States uh, according to the agreement with Spain. So forgive me for being a little bit ignorant with that one here, but how does that affect, you know, specifically speaking about Americans, but how does that affect an American paying into the Social Security or even just taxes in general? No, the, it, does, it does not affect. The only thing that Spain wants to be sure that this person, according to the agreement with the United States, even that he's working remotely from Spain, he will continue paying the Social Security in the States. So they want a certificate of coverage during all this period. So it's just to make sure that they're still taking care of their Social Security responsibilities back at home. Exactly. Second scenario would be if this company has a, super, a, a branch in Spain, the, uh, then the branch in Spain pays the social security in Spain for these workers. So it would be either certificate of coverage from the United States or certificate of coverage from Spain if the entity for whom they work is registered in Spain as well. And what about taxes specifically? How does, how does that all work? I get a lot of questions about paying taxes, the number of days that you're here. Uh, how, how does that work? Yes, on regards to the taxes, because this law is not only an immigration law, it has also the tax, uh, and they mention also how they will be taxed, these digital nomads. On regard to the taxes, here we have uh, three things to take in consideration. The first one is that all the digital nomads, if they want to extend their permits, uh, they will need to be at least six months per year in the country. This means that they will become tax residents and they will have to pay taxes. And for this, they created a special regime, which would be 24% on all the incomes from the professional activities during the first five years, and they don't need to declare their assets or wealth abroad and to pay for it in Spain. So they will pay a flat fee of 24% on all what they receive from the work that they perform in Spain. How long is the actual, uh, or how long should I say, is the actual visa valid for? The digital nomads visa will be valid for three years and the renewals will be always for two years. For two years, every time you renew. Exactly. And how does that work in terms of long-term residence? Can you turn that into residence and even citizenship eventually? Yes, uh, on regards to the long-term residency, the permanent residency, after the first five years of residency in Spain, if they have been not more than 10 months during this period of five years out of the country, they would be able to switch from the digital nomad to the permanent residency. On regards to the citizenship, if they live six months per year, every year during 10 years, if they are from the United States, they would be able uh, to request the nationality. If they are from Latin American countries, only after two years of residency, they can apply already for the citizenship. Right, the, the Latin American countries allow for a much faster Exactly. Ability to get into to citizenship, correct? Because of the agreements with, uh, between Spain and their countries and the common culture that we, and the history that we have. I was also reading a little bit about where you can apply fully for this, this new visa that's coming out. 
obviously there's some paperwork that you need to get done or probably should get done at home like we said be a little bit faster to get the FBI uh, background check and everything up Postille to bring over what happens if I'm already in Spain I've decided that I want to apply can I get everything done from Spain from here yes uh, you are uh, this uh, law allows you to apply for this permit in Spain but it's very important that you have to apply during the 90 days since you entered it as a tourist into the country. So what would you what would you recommend? Would you recommend starting the process before coming over here or while you're already here? Mm, well, mm, my recommendation is to, to have, a, of course, a consultation with our company to understand the situation, the documents, the company, the relation, the salary, so, to organize the file. And uh, then they can come here to Spain and we apply during this 90 days uh, process. The only document that is a little bit a stopper and is a red flag it would be the FBI because in the US the FBI it takes long to get it. Uh, so this would be what we need to control in terms of timings. Okay, so that's the one piece of paper or one document that you would really recommend getting done back at home. Exactly. Care of. Yeah, that can take a little bit longer in time and obviously with the bureaucracy and all the different um, you know, kind of delays that we have right now specifically. It's probably something that you should get done at home and then also the office steel as well. That's just a personal experience myself having moved over from the States to, uh, to Barcelona. Uh, you said that you could help out with the, the process and everything. What, what do you offer here at All Sales Group? Yes, uh, well, uh, let me tell you that we are the best on immigration in Spain and what we have is a package for the digital nomad uh, to facilitate all the process from the beginning until the end. Basically, what we do is that uh, we help you to fill the forms. Well, they need, to have, they need to give us a power of attorney, and then we start the process, which will be helping to fill the forms, uh, organizing the sword translation into Spanish of the, of the documents. We also review that the letter from the company is uh, correct, or even we do a draft of this letter to facilitate the process. We also review that the, the rest of the documents that we mentioned, such as the professional capacity, such as the company documents, the work contract, we review that is clear and correct. We also uh, guide on the way to get this certificate of coverage from the social security. We also offer uh, an insurance which is specific for this process and it's quite cheap and that is called ASISA. So we do also this part and uh, we take care of, uh, of the financial funds to see that, uh, that there are the minimums already uh, able to apply for it. So then we submit this application online with our license and normally in around one to two months we will receive the final decision from the government or from the state. Once the file is approved, because here in Balsays all the files are approved, uh, then we go into the, the next step which would be to do the fingerprints at the national police and to get the ID of Spain that will allow you to live and to work in Spain legally and to travel around Schengen and European Union as well legally. So you said about one or two months in terms of the paperwork and everything to get processed before going into the fingerprints and getting exactly. done with the police. So realistically it can be done within the 90 days that, that tourists are given to be inside Spain before, before having to leave. Exactly. Perfect. Let me tell you Patrick also that once you submit the application, even that if you overstay the 90 days, you can be in the country uh, until there is a decision. So, Oh, that's really good to know. I yeah. don't think a lot of people know those, those little, little details right there, but that, that really helps as long as you have some paperwork already going in, exactly. you still have that extension where you can stay a little bit longer. Exactly. Perfect. That's, that's really good to know. Thank you for that, for that tip right there. Now, in terms of comparisons maybe to some other visas, I know this might be a harder question for you. Um, because a lot of people come over on the non-lucrative visa or even the golden visa, the retirement kind of ideas. Uh, how does this process kind of compare to any of those others? Here there is uh, this digital nomad uh, came into effect in order to regularize all these people that they are working remotely and they don't have the possibility to do it in Spain because there was not this uh, permit. So this first thing to tell you. On regards to the non-lucrative residency permit, the process is a little bit more tough because you need to do it at the consulate at the beginning, then the renewals can be done in Spain. And also the consulates, they be very careful uh, to give these permits to those who will work remotely. Actually, they don't give it. So in the past, we had several uh, situations where the applicant, the consulate uh, saw that he's working 
and he wants to continue the activity in Spain, so they rejected this non-lucrative residency permit because this permit is oriented uh, for people who just retire and does not want to work. That's why Digital Nomad will help all these people who could not apply for the non-lucrative residency permit because they are working remotely or they want to do it this from Spain. And, uh, and lately, lastly, on regards to the Golden Visa, the Golden Visa is also a very interesting and very attractive permit because basically if you invest half a million in real estate in our country, then you get uh, in a fast track process a residency and work permit. So this would also, these persons who get this permit, they will be allowed as well to do uh, digital nomad activities. So Golden Visa would be the top because it's very fast and give you everything. Mm -hmm. Digital nomads, uh, it's also very good, but you need to prove this digital relation with your employee, employer or uh, clients. And the non-lucrative visa, it's only for those who wants to retire and they don't want to perform any other activity than relax and going to the beach. Exactly. Well, in Barcelona, it's not a bad place to do that. Exactly. Right? <laughs> but yeah, you definitely, obviously the big difference being that you can still work and, and generate some income while you're here in Spain. Exactly. Legally, right? Uh, well, that's great. How can people get in touch with you if they're looking to apply for this Nomad visa and they really want to kind of speed up the process? My personal opinion and my personal recommendation for everybody is that whenever you're doing paperwork, especially in Spain, you should definitely go and have someone take care of it for you. It's been a long time since I've actually had to go through that process, but it's always something that just takes so much off, so much weight off of your shoulders. So how can people get in touch with you? Well, uh, to get in touch with, with us, uh, we have the website, balsaysgroup.com. We have also a YouTube channel where we explain a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, things about immigration and business, legal taxes. So it's a very informative channel as well. Uh, then also we have the social networks like Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. So there we publish a lot. Our idea is to be very active. We are very active in general, but also in the digital. If you guys have any other questions about getting into this Nomad Visa, applying for it, or getting in touch with Kristen and the group over here at, at Bao Sales Group, make sure you check out those links in the description below. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out.